100 years ago, it took almost two weeks for a message to cross the Atlantic. Today it takes a blink of an eye. I'm here to talk to you about the evolution of telecommunications. Tele meaning long distance communications. I've been studying and working this for 10 years. Until this day, when I think of that instantaneous connection among continents, I think it's magic. I'm sure you have a smartphone with a fast internet connection. That's called 4G LTE. LTE stands for long-term evolution. It was the core of my PhD thesis and is today's latest cellular technology. Now I'm working on 5G, the next big wireless thing. And when I get asked, what is it? What is 5G? Is it faster internet? I usually say, get ready, because it's much more than that, which is why I'm here today. I want to take you on a journey, a wireless journey, towards this 5G and its impact on society. The very first mobile phone call was made in 1973 by Martin Cooper. He was an employee at Motorola, and that day he was in Midtown, New York, and decided to call the Bell Labs, his competitors, saying, hey guys, I'm calling you from a cell phone. <laughs> A real handheld portable cell phone. Can you believe it? <laughs> that prototype weighed more than two pounds. You could store up to 30 numbers, and it had a stellar battery life of 20 minutes. <laughs> it was sold in the 80s for $4,000. That was 1G, all about phone calls. And then we got 2G a smaller phone with a nice digital interface where you could send and read messages. You could also play games like Snake. Do you remember Snake? <laughs> I love that. I love that. And then we got 3G. And 3G triggered the real mass adoption of these devices. Beautiful touchscreen interfaces with this internet connectivity, the most important thing, which triggered us telecom engineers to bring faster and faster internet connection into your phones. So it's how we got here today, 4G LTE, the whole internet fast and seamless at your fingertips. So what is 5G? What is ahead of us? But before I jump there, I want to explain you how it's even possible that today we can send a message from here to the other side of the world in a blink of an eye, literally. It's even faster than that. The core of connectivity, of global connectivity, is the internet. And in spite of what many people think, it's not based on satellites and space communication, it's based on real, tangible cables. The internet runs over cables. Terrestrial, underground, and underwater, thick underwater cables. The very first attempt to deploy an underwater cable happened in 1850 trying to connect England and France over the English Channel. But that was a failure. The, the, the wire was so thin and light that it couldn't even sink into the water. It was just floating miserably. <laughs> but in eight years, in 1858, they were able to connect Europe and North America. This was the electric telegraph, the first miracle of communications. It was the very first time in history where you could send messages across continents over wires fastly instead of walking or riding a horse like Pony Express or crossing the ocean on a ship. So it was, it was a revolutionary moment. It was seen as the herald, as the instrument of world peace because of this first of its kind capabilities to connect continents and remote locations fastly. It was so revolutionary that Tiffany's, the New York jewelers, they bought the remainder of that cable, they cut it into four inches pieces and they sold them as souvenirs. Today we have over half a million miles of cables all around the world connecting the planet. But Ten years ago, the only way to access this beautiful, hyper-connected thing called the Internet was only from home, from your computer. Or if you were outdoors, you had to walk into an Internet cafe. So that motivated us engineers obsessed with optimization and efficiency to say, come on, that's not very ideal. Why don't we bring the Internet connectivity into your pockets, into your phones, your portable device? So mobile phones became smartphones 
We simply connected the cell tower connected over the telephone network 10 years ago to the internet. So the mobile internet infrastructure that we are working on is simple. It's two components. It's wires, the internet, the backbone, and the wireless. The cellular access, the connection between your phone and the nearby cell tower that's sitting somewhere around here, and that's the core of my research. Information travels at nearly the speed of light, 150,000 miles per second. Meaning that in a blink of an eye, information can travel around the planet five times. But what really defines a connection, whether it's a cable or the radio, the wireless link, it's capacity. It's how much information we can squeeze into the pipe and that can travel at the speed of light. So we can look at the connection as a highway with lanes of information. So in the internet, these cables, underwater and, and underground, the, the capacity is massive. You can send a lot of information. The bottleneck, the problem, is the wireless link between your phone and the nearby cell tower. In 2G, the first phone that we connected to the internet, there was a small highway where we could only exchange text and emails. We made a better job with 3G. We built a better infrastructure where we could browse the internet with images and was good, but still pretty limiting. So 4G was the real game change today technology where you can also stream your video, download and upload any type of digital content. But because of this, because of these capabilities, we're generating and exchanging a lot of data. In 2020, it's expected to reach the equivalent of 20,000 billion videos. And it turned out to take 200 million years to watch. So all of a sudden, this great 4G LTE capacity might not be enough to carry around all this data, right? So 5G, in 5G, we're building a bigger highway. But if 5G was all about that, it would be disappointing. You could expect this. 1G to 4G was all about phones and smartphones and internet. So 5G is way more than this. This is a big challenge, and it's my daily job, but 5G is more than that. In 5G, there will be new players connecting wirelessly to the internet and to each other. Of course, with safe and regulated radiation levels. So there will be sensors, for example. Uh, connected sensors. In the smart society concept, also known as massive Internet of Things. Like, for example, in the future smart city, we might have a lot of sensors used to measure water, energy, or monitor pollution and temperature, control city lights and transportation. And then cars will wirelessly connect to each other and to the Internet to better sense the environment exchange information and navigate more safely and probably realize the fully driverless car paradigm. The same technology can be applied to drones, autonomous drones that will deliver boxes and packages at your door, but not only, sooner than you expect, they might fly us, humans, around thanks to 5G and these wireless connectivity capabilities. And then robots controlled wirelessly, remotely, instantaneously. Imagine a firefighter operating from a safe location from his office, a robot in a dangerous and otherwise inaccessible area, watching what the robot sees through his surrounding and immersive cameras in virtual reality, maybe, and then moving his, his arms and mapping these movements miles away instantaneously to move the robotic arms and try and save a human life. So 5G is like an invisible fabric which will wirelessly connect all these players and enable all these futuristic scenarios. But how? Why do we need 5G? There are four main reasons why we were able to better exploit the wireless link. The first one is a wider highway, more capacity, which is needed. Because, for example, cars 
will generate a lot of data to sense the surrounding and be safe and navigate safely, will sense through cameras and leaders and radars, and then they need to exchange this information to help nearby cars to sense potential danger. So we need a lot of wireless capacity to enable all this. And then the second reason is much more responsive. 5G will be instantaneous. Why? To let cars and drones react promptly to any potential danger approaching you. And imagine remote surgeons, thanks to instantaneous responsiveness, they can operate with extreme time precision, wirelessly and miles away. Then we have reliability. 5G will be much more reliable. We need stable and constant connectivity in 5G. We cannot tolerate pixels while you watch a video. Those are fluctuations in quality. It means that there's some interference or congestion, and you see, and your video um, decays, the quality decays, or you're calling and the, and the call freezes. We cannot tolerate that in 5G because human lives are at stake here. And then finally, security, advanced security and privacy, which is core given the amount of data, sensitive data that need to be protected. So these are some of the key ingredients of, of 5G and some of the potential examples of how 5G might look like. But what's the social impact of mobile technology? Let's start by looking at today, how these devices, smartphones and mobile connectivity have has had an impact on our lives today, both on a personal level and on a collective level. So on a personal level, I know we may be overusing this technology sometimes. I do the same. But it's a new technology. It's in its infancy. It's less than 10 years old, and it's engaging and pretty amazing. Um, it's normal that we get overwhelmed. It's already happened in the past. As soon as we get something new, misusing and abusing that technology is part of any major change. It happened when we got newspapers or, or TV. We'll adapt, we'll get better, we'll improve, we'll learn, like in an evolutionary process. Mistakes are part of that process. And we're already changing this technology. Software engineers and interface creators are already proposing and introducing new solutions to make these devices less addictive and less invasive, more transparent. A simple example is the way we will interact with this technology more naturally. Like, for example, for voice, this is already happening, voice commands or gestures. To avoid this constant engagement with the digital interface. And then on a global and collective level, how mobile wireless networks have has had an impact on society is for example by building awareness, like in the Arab Spring movements against dictatorships. Leaderless revolutions where people were able to communicate, organize and coordinate over networks outdoors, wirelessly. It also helped building empathy. Like Pablo Reis Martinez, a young man that shared this battle against leukemia from his hospital, with his over a quarter of a million followers, able to raise awareness about the importance of donating bone marrow. His goal is to reach a million donations, and he's already triggered thousands of them. So these are some examples of how today men have harnessed the power of mobile technology. But my question now is, how about tomorrow? How about this 5G, this new thing? Sure, thanks to robots and cars and environmental sensors everywhere, we might be living in a safer society, more green and more energy efficient. But beyond that, what 5G will truly unlock on a human-to-human -human and on a global and collective level is still unknown to us. Just like in 4G and 3G, we built the infrastructure, the technology, but we didn't know, honestly, we didn't predict awareness and empathy. Now it's the same thing. 5G is the pillars, the foundation for the next societal transformation. We will see how we're going to harness the power of a faster, more reliable, and more secure wireless technology. 
I, I personally imagine a world where fast and ubiquitous connectivity will democratize the access, for example, to health and education by remotely and instantaneously connecting teachers and doctors with people in underdeveloped countries or in underserved locations. And I envision a global network where, on top of information, we'll be spreading and expanding empathy, getting us closer to distant strangers, stimulating creativity or moving compassion. I imagine a network that will be able to spark our curiosity, foster openness, and create a social glue for radical change, where we can all play a role and make a difference. But before I leave the stage, I want to share with you a quote from 1858 that inspires why I do what I do, telecommunications and the future of connectivity. It's a quote from Harry Field, speaking about the electric telegraph, the first Atlantic cable connecting continents. He says, it brings the world together. It joins the sundered hemispheres. It unites distant nations, making them feel that they're members of one great family. Thank you.